So let's take a look at this, see what it says. It says property taxes for the year are $840. The closing date is July 16th. With the day of closing bill belonging to the seller, using a 360 day year, which is the correct entry that would be entered into the closing statement. Very simple, let me give you the, what are they asking here? They're asking you if taxes for a piece of property is $840. The individual who's buying it is buying it and the closing is taking place July 16th. So we're talking about taxes. Closing date is July 16th. And you will see where it says closing date belonging to whom? Yes. To the seller. So that means the 16th is going to be accounted for the seller. And they're telling you how many days to use for the year. That is, they will give that to you. That's important. Basically, that's all you need to know. Property tax is 840, closing day is July 16th. The seller gets that day, 365 day year. Now, my, my, this is getting special, right? This is the getting special, or you can call it the lazy special. That's why I call it. I'm looking here, let me ask you a question. If we are closing on the 20th, on July, 20th, uh, July 16th, who owns the property from January 1st of that year to July 16th? The seller. The seller, correct? Who's living? Who's selling the house? Who's not, who's not gonna be around when taxes are due? Seller. seller. So who has to pay from the July 16th going back to January 1st? The buyer. The seller. The seller. The seller. The seller. The seller. See, seller is, is the owner. Seller owns the property from January 1st until July 16th. Correct? So seller is paying. They have to leave their money in escrow. So that way, the buyer will have that money, her portion or his portion, the seller's portion, waiting for her. Why? Because taxes are paid at the end of the year. Okay, we said taxes are paid in arrear, meaning we paid it in the back end. Make sense? So here, here, what are we gonna do? Anything that says debit buyer cannot be correct. Am I right? Because the seller, remember debit meaning someone is paying someone else. Am I right? So right there you can eliminate two questions. Because that says debit buyer, it cannot be right. That says debit buyer, cannot be right. Am I right? You with me so far? Yes. Come on now. Yes. It's Wednesday. You were you, know, you were dead on Monday. You were dead on last Friday. Today is Wednesday, so let's lively up, no? All right. So here, now we have debit seller, debit seller. So we cannot eliminate those two based on debit buyer because debit seller, debit seller. That's what we want. Now it turns on the amount. So if you look at the amount, let's take eight forty. 840, if you divide it, if you were to divide that in half, that would give you at least what? 420, right? We'll give you at least 420. Meaning, if, if we were selling this house on June 30th, it would be at least half half. Make sense? Since seller is responsible for more than half, then we know seller is going to pay more than 420. So based on that, we know this number cannot be correct. Am I right? Correct. So therefore, the only answer that's correct here is what? C. I didn't do any math. I just used a little common sense. And it took me too long to, to explain it because I had to speak. But if I didn't have to speak, two seconds. Got it? Yeah. So that's one way.